Let's give him a hand.
And we get here and turn it into a fun little evening event. We made calls and we had a lot of success with it. Remember that, Amy? I was here, yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. I don't know why I asked her. So anyway, with that, you two gentlemen want to say anything before we get rolling? Ricky, are you on a time frame until 10 o'clock? Yeah, I got a closing at 11. So okay. So we're probably going to let Ricky run first. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. You guys want to say anything before we get going? Yeah, I like what you said about uh, building relationships. I think the point of the call is to introduce ourselves and to get to know them. And then I personally like to send some mail. Uh, before I, my mail goes out continually, but I think if, if you establish the call with the mail and remind them even when the call that you may have received some mail from me recently, then they can kind of put um, your name with, with that mail. And I think I'm trying to stay on top of their mind, like you said, um, when they do decide to sell. Most people are not going to want to sell when you call them. They're not going to be interested in doing business. But the point is to establish your name, stay in front of them, send them the mail, and then I always try to get the email address, so that then we can, the point of the call is to introduce yourself and hopefully get the email address, and then send them what you email. Some people are going to be quick with you, you go to the next one. Don't yeah. take it personally. It's so easy to take it personally when people are quick with you or whatever. Just roll it off. I think, am I willing to do this to make 10 grand, 15 grand? Can I, can I handle someone saying no to me to make 12 grand? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, or to help somebody. I mean, the point is to help people, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I take a no to make a little better no. I'm sure I can, you know, I'm willing to do it. So, um, so I'm usually either calling for a buyer. I mean, we are set trying to establish a relationship. But I try to cut, I, I cut to the chase sometimes a little quick about I'm calling because so-and-so has a buyer and I'm calling to see if they would consider looking at an offer. Or how <coughs> things go in the Regency Isle? Have you guys given any thought to selling lately? Something like that. And most people are saying, no, I'm not now. Or, you know, in six months or nine months. And then the point is to ask them if I can stay in touch with them. Or would you mind if uh, I stay in touch with you until the time comes to sell? And most people are going to say yes to that. I think. Okay. So that's about all I got to say. And you're going to see three different styles today, too. You'll establish your own style of what works for you. Um, did anybody notice Scott's tone? He's got this really calm demeanor. Very different. Than, very, different than, very different than mine. Very different than mine, and probably very different than Ricky's approach. But what you're going to find is you've got to be yourself, and don't be somebody else on there. Because again, remember the main thing here is to attract people that are attracted to a personality, a person like yourself. Um, most of the issues I get as a broker are people where you've got someone that's from Venus and Mars. They can't communicate well together. They don't like each other. They're just getting a deal done and guess where it goes? Like this. The best thing you can do is build a base of people that, w that like what you do, like how you do it, and like who you are. Because you're going to get a ton of referrals from those people. Okay? Rich, you made a comment a couple of days ago on one of his videos about the number one reason people choose an agent is likability. It's not skill or not how many you sold. It's do, do they like you? Can they communicate with you? So I'm a perfect example of that. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be kind of a chameleon. I mean, if they're yeah. more analytical and scientific and, and they want to talk about numbers, then I try to mirror what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. Basically, guys, the bottom line is phone calls are keen, and everything else just builds your brand. Like conversations are the key to all closing. Closings happen every single day. In our MLS, there's closings happening every single day. Um, conversation, every single closing originated from a conversation that was converted into a relationship. Every single one of them. Even if it's a buyer lead, you still got to call them. Right? They're, it's all conversations. So if you really want to jumpstart your career, you have to just make a lot of phone calls. And so what I, what I do, what I've thought about over the years was, who's the most productive prospects I have to talk to? For me, it's owners because they buy and sell. A lot of people think of owners as just sellers, just listings, but they buy and sell. They're the best source of buyers and listings. So they're a two-dimensional prospect. You know, why not just go after them, right? The other part of it is, is you cannot call all the owners in the area. It'll never happen, ever. So it's unlimited. So you have an unlimited amount of the highest quality prospects in the market. Why not only concentrate on those to be most efficient, right? I think a lot of people just get caught up in all the other stuff 
other than making calls. And then they kind of trick yourself into thinking I'm doing good or I'm staying busy and all this stuff. But they're not being as productive as they could be. They're not being as efficient as they could be. So the thing with the calls are that you know, you're going to have good and bad calls, and a lot of people are scared to make calls, they're scared of the uh, failure, rejection. rejection. You know, what are they going to say? Are they going to catch me off guard? And really, it's a chicken and egg thing. You can't get really good at making calls until you've made a bunch of calls. So you have to go through that stage of being really scared and just making them. And then once you break through that, it, there are stages. You're scared to make them, then you, then you make them, right? Then you, then you say, okay, I'm not scared to make them. Now I need to figure out what I need to say to them. Then once you figure out what to say, then you figure out how to say it. And then the next part is how to read people. You know, reading people on the phone and trying to make them feel comfortable, that's the skill that everybody needs to be working on. It's how do I make everybody I come in contact with feel comfortable with me, you know, on the phone or in person, etc. Because that's who they're going to choose to be their realtor, is whoever makes them feel the most comfortable. Because they can find a realtor anywhere. I mean, there's... 25 of us in this room, right? I mean, any, any, money, no. But if someone really stands out to them who makes them feel like they really care about them and really wants to help them long-term, short-term, that's who they're going to go with. So that there's an unlimited amount of people, owners, in, the mar in this market. There's an unlimited amount for you, you, you. There's an unlimited amount of people that will only deal with you forever in the market, free, all of us, unlimited, can't, can't handle them all, ever. It's your job to make enough calls, to filter through, to find those people, and to build your database full of those people that love you, like you, trust you, want to deal with you. You build your database that way, think about where you're going to be in three or four years, right? If you focus on this long-term business, but then people want to buy and sell. You're not going to talk anybody into buy or sell. They've already decided when they're going to buy or sell. They, are, they already know. It's our job just to make them feel comfortable so that whenever that was, that decision is to be made, whether it be today or next year, or next five years, that we're the one they come to. You stay in front of them. Right? So when you're making your calls, my philosophy is, is I'm, I'm trying to make create a relationship long term and then if they happen to be thinking about doing something now, great. That's my now business, right? Because a lot of people say, how do you get now business? You're, all your stuff is long, so long-term philosophy. But, but really, you, you, you kill it short-term and long-term with the way I do it, all right? So everything else, build your brand. You have to have that, too. So it's the phone calls, and then you build your brand with the emails, the Facebook, the uh, postcards, the signs, the billboards, and all that stuff. I got some cell numbers for you. And it all adds together, right? Yeah. And you know, the, the key to what Ricky's saying is, is that the mm -hmm. mistake a lot of people make on the phone is, is that they get somebody on the phone and then they start throwing up everything. They try to throw everything they got at them on the phone at once. And what I'm saying is you got a bunch of bullets in your chamber you can use. And if you're looking at it from a relationship perspective, you can pull those bullets out and use them as you gain your relationship with them. But most agents just start, I'm the best, I did this, da 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 And the person on the other end is just still trying to comprehend everything that you're saying. Mm -hmm. Again, I personally, in my mind, I try to get some kind of, I try to find some kind of common thread so that they remember who I am. You know, and... Um, Scripts help with the, with the fear. Yeah. If you're just writing down what you're going to say, have an idea of a few things you can talk about. How long have you owned it? Have you thought about buying another one? Stuff like that. How did you pick the building? Just have some stuff in front of you that, and Ricky's got scripts, and I've got several here if anybody wants. And, and maybe you guys can help. I was proud of Joy this morning. She was one of my first calls. She was watching to somebody online and got cut off. And she asked me, what would I say? And I'm sitting there, well, you know, I'll do this. I came up with some stuff. But she's looking for a script on how to respond to a for sale by owner when you make the statement that um, I, can I can guarantee you that I can make you more money selling your house using me as a realtor than you doing it yourself. That's a brazen statement to say to somebody selling their house. 
And she asked me, how would you back that up? And I said, well, I don't make that statement, but I probably <laughs> I probably would go find the stats. I'd Google it, because there are stats on Realtor.com and other places that show that people receive more value and the house sells for a certain percent more when it's with a realtor versus them that they did it on their own for sale by owner. Now, if you've got that information and that script works really well, then you try to get them to sit down with it. Say, but I don't have that script, but I was proud of her because obviously she's looking for one. Do you, do you guys have an answer to that? They're intense on what they're doing. But you see what I'm saying? The scripts are important because if you're going to use a script like that, you better be able to back it up. Does that make sense? Just being prepared for information right in front of you. Absolutely. And I'm going to show you what you do when you're really not prepared. And I did that on purpose. I literally called in. When I came in this morning, I said to Carlin, go in and get my last leads with phone numbers from a certain lead source. And I'm just basically going to call them. I don't even know what they were looking at. Because sometimes you just, let me tell you why I'm doing that. If you've got a time block and you don't have time to really prepare every time you do it, the time block and the calls when you're new at this is extremely important. Make the calls whether, you know, you need to be prepared, but if you're not, you're still going to, you're going to blow some. You know, people, India can vouch for this. I will let you fail a bunch learning. Because me doing something for her every time she has an issue is absolutely never going to get her where she needs to be to make decisions on her feet and be a successful agent. You know, I let them, you know, I'll coach them, but they're going to go make that call and dig themselves out of the hole that they got in. Okay? Me doing it for them has accomplished absolutely nothing. But it pays off. But it does pay off. She's not, I try to get her to do this. She's not afraid to call anybody anymore, which is good. She had nine months of phone training if that's all she did. And she's, she will tell you, it, it paid off. She's doing, she's actually off to a really, really good year. She's had a few fall apart, so she's a little down on herself right now. You know what? You pick yourself up, that's real estate. So with that, let's make a few calls. Ricky, you wanna go first? Right, cool. Guys, so, please, we can't laugh or be noisy or anything, because these people don't know that you're listening. Speaker phone, speaker phone. Yeah. Okay, so check this out. Um, like how do you get numbers and all that stuff real quick there's a website called red x red x geo leads and it boom you put the address in it finds all the numbers okay so there's no excuses like it's right there you click two buttons and boom you get it um if you call red x and tell them that i sent you you they waive the 200 dollar fee I'm just saying this helps you guys out with the 200 dollar fee also, all my phone scripts and videos of me making calls and stuff is on my website, zerodiamond.com. You can go there and get everything for nothing. Um, so the address, if you put in an address for Pelican Point, yeah. 24880, they're, yeah. they're going to give you all the home numbers? Yeah. Yeah, all the numbers for uh, the owners. They, they, they reversed with the address system. for the owner. Okay. okay. <laughs> so then I take them out of Red X and I put them in Mojo. That's how I do the dial. Red X has a dial of two. I don't think it's as great. I watched Mojo this morning. I yeah. watched schedule the call. So I put it in Mojo and, and, and you can, it's a dialer. So you just hit click and it just starts calling. You just sit there. You just talk to people. You don't do anything. You just type in notes or whatever on your computer and it goes from call to call to call. It'll triple dial. It'll call three at once. Okay? So I don't have time to get into that. But uh, that's how you would like, like if I have, like if I need to call a building, I'm just like, okay, boom, put the address in, get the numbers. I make sure I'm not calling people that are listed, and then I just put them in Mojo and hit dot. So it takes me like 10 minutes to find the numbers, look up the comps, put them in Mojo, and start calling them if I wanted to do that. What's your strategy about voicemail? What do you do? I just, I use voicemail as a branding tool. I'm not trying to get them to call me back. Like, I don't care if they call me back. A lot of people, some people may call you back, but too many people are, I, this is the most question I get is about voicemail. And it, I just say, hey, it's Ricky Cruz at Remix of Orange Beach. Give me a call when you get a chance, my phone number. And really, my thing is, I just want them to hear my name and company. Then they'll see my postcards or emails or signs, and they'll eventually start to get the point, hey, this guy's for real. People want to see that you're consistent over time, you know, that you're real, because they're so... They're getting postcards from 10 realtors. They're getting phone calls from people, you know, that are in and out of the business. 
you know, they're, they're going to notice the people that are there consistently, you know, through whatever mediums you use to, to stay in touch with people. So, Scott just gave me these numbers. I don't know these people yeah, at all. That's my client. That's my great I'm fixing a skill. I don't know if I thought mail on the call. I'm fixing a deal. I'm going to do a referral on this. 10%. Yeah, the voice is right. Two on one. One on two. Ground floor. Let's see what he has to say. Turn it out. It's up all the way. Hello. Hey, Miss Nevins. Yeah. This is Ricky Cruz at Remax of Orange Beach. How you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, me too, man. What's up? Stay on the beach today. Uh, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but there hasn't been a, a unit at Pelican Point Cell this year, and I was just calling to see if there's anything in the world I could do for you. Um, are you with a real estate company? Yeah, hey, Remax of Orange Beach. Gotcha. 
Um, I got gotcha. you. Right now we're just not interested in it. Okay. But I you, appreciate it. You, you guys have a good day. So hey, okay, went along. there's not been a sale in the building. I'm calling to see if you guys have given any thought to selling. So she she yeah. seemed confused she about what you wanted. Were, she didn't know what you wanted. See, see, there's there's different strategies, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, is like when you go through a call session, you may have something that you're saying, and then you don't feel like it's hitting them just right. Switch it up. Like I was calling Turquoise Place a while back, and I was saying. I think I was saying like something like, hey, you know, I sold 100 properties last year and I didn't, you know, I didn't know if you might want to sell. And they were not, I wasn't getting the response I wanted. They just weren't. So I switched it and I was like, because I have a listing there. So I switched it from that to, hey, I've got the cheapest four bedroom in there for sale. You know, I didn't know if you or anybody, you know, might be interested. And then I started getting the, the responses I wanted and I started, you know, creating those relationships and stuff. So. Don't just stick to your script and just, you know, uh, always be perfecting it and, and tweaking it and making it better and take notes and figure out. That's how I came up with the script that I have, that I do. It's from trial and error, just figuring out what works and what doesn't work, you know? See, this is a perfect example, guys, of what I was talking about. Ricky's dead set on the relationship. Mm -hmm. Scott, I'm not throwing you on no, the no, bus no, no. here. It's true. But you're more aggressive towards the it listing is. and what's happening right now oh, on their scripts and they're both successful you see what i'm saying so you got to figure out what works for you the long term is the better strategy i'm not yes. my, my interpersonal skills long term are not as good this is what i'm talking about know who and what you are well i see what i see what i see what you're talking about and she sounded confused. There's no no sales in the building. I, I, I think she was happen? like, "Are you saying it's a bad building right now?" Right. Uh, you know, because if you maybe, I mean, there's another option yeah. would have been saying, "There's nothing listed in your building right now." Instead of saying, "There's nothing sold," because I know she was like, "What do you mean? There's nothing sold?" Because we're in the business, so we know what you're talking and, about. And part of it is too is that that lady might not have understood the next guy really does right. you can't base your whole thing on one the way one person responds yeah and i'm two calls in see see if i were going to call the whole building and call all 100 units or whatever you know i would get about 10 or 15 calls in and i would figure out what what i need to be saying it's hard to be maybe 10 calls to really get to where i actually knew exactly how i needed to approach each, each person you know so that part of it is like it, yeah, is is adapting your script as you go with the reasons that you're doing what you're doing, you know, and getting the people's. You want to say things and have such a tone that that you get that response of warmness. You know, you want them to come back and kind of feel warm with you back and forth. That's when you start winning. All right. I'm like, is there anything I can do to help you? How are things going in Pelican Point? We're gonna get you in a second. You're going to get three different styles. What you're going to find is making the calls what's important. Absolutely. Cole Colster? Hey, Miss Waller. Yes. 
This Ricky Carruth down at Remax of Orange Beach, how you doing? I'm good. Oh yeah, me too, man. It's a gorgeous day down here. I bet it is. Hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but uh, Pelican Point, there's only one listing there, 1403. I was just calling to see if there's anything I could do for you guys. Got, uh, I mean, they're all over the place. There was a corner unit that actually broke 500. Uh, there was, you know, 420, 415, you know, love for the 1403 is listed for 460. So, ah, you know, in the mid fours, let's see, you are 704. Yeah, so you're, you're mid fours, depending on what, it, what the condition is. You're probably on the higher end. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, um, do you guys have an agent down here that you work with? No. Oh, okay. We haven't been yeah. interested in selling yet. Yeah. So. Well, I'm sure at some point, I don't know, five or ten years down the road, you might yeah. do something. Hey, what have you already been staying in touch with you? Sure. What is your email? It's julie.waller. Cool. All right. Hey, when are you guys going to uh, be down in the area next? Um, I will be down there in May, like the first week of May. Okay. Actually, I'm coming down on the 5th, and I'll be there that whole next week. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, look, I'm going to put you down. I might give you a shout, and maybe we can do some lunch or something, and put a face with the name and all that good stuff, and hang out for a bit. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll send you some emails and stay in touch. And if you guys need something, let me know. All right. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for the call. All right. Save. Everybody get their email address. So, like, <laughs> so, so like look, look, I got a, got a roll. I got a closing. But, like, I would have went further with that conversation. I would have, like, I kind of ended it kind of quick. I would have kept going, you know, and kept getting her talking and getting to know her a little bit. And just so you guys know, I just kind of cut it kind of short. But you see what happened there. I got the email address. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't ask them if they wanted to buy or sell, right? Uh, uh, it's different, right? I'm, I'm approaching them differently. That's going to stand out to them. And then if I were to want to steal Scott's client, I could call them. <laughs> okay. I Scott could call, needs to follow up with I could call them before May and set that lunch appointment up, right? I'm going to send a weekly email every week on the same day forever, like I have since 07, and develop a relationship. So that's Let's it. Give him a hand. Yeah. Any questions? Scott, you need to thank him the most. He's got you two leads coming in town. <laughs>